1981, the numbers of extreme poor dropped from 77% to 14% of the population. It was 13% in China. In South Asia, the numbers went down from 61% to 39%. And in Latin America, which started at a much lower number, 14%, the number of ab absolutely poor is more than half, to about 6% of the region's population. Even Africa budged, but not very much, to just under half the population, 47%, compared with 51% 30 years before. China and India are the most spectacular cases, but other countries have done well too, particularly Vietnam, Brazil, Peru in the last uh, 10 years, and Chile, where poverty is at about the same level as in the United States. Uh, good as these numbers sound, they have to be put into perspective. While the number of people living on less than a dollar twenty-five a day has dropped, the number of those living on less than two dollars a day uh, hasn't moved in 30 years. They are sorry, proportion, not number. They are 2.5 billion, or 43% of the population in the developing world. Basically, over the last uh, three decades, improvements in human welfare have, have barely kept up with population growth. And surprisingly, after all these years of promoting and analyzing development in the world, uh, there's no consensus on what it takes to promote economic growth or development. A stable economic environment is clearly essential, low inflation, reasonable interest rates, predictable rules, and so on. Uh, political stability is also important, but there's some debate, even controversy, about how much is desirable. But as we go wiser, we can overlook the obvious. Uh, the former U.S. Treasury Secretary and president of Harvard, uh, Larry Summers, a brilliant man, famous for making unfortunate statements, uh, issued a policy paper at the World Bank when he was the chief economist, suggesting that the most effective contribution to development was to teach girls. Um, and few would object to that suggestion even now. Improving basic health and education services more broadly was an integral part of the successful uh, East Asian development model. Now let's turn to the role of religion. With the exception of Japan, all the first developed countries were Christian, but not everyone welcomed Christian values. Uh, the, in the words of Wangari Matai, the Kenyan winner of the 2004 Peace Prize, quote, as Christianity became embedded in Africa, so did the idea that it was the afterlife that was the proper focus of a devotee rather than this one, a legacy that continues to affect development. Such an attitude allows institutions and powerful people to encourage people to remain passive. They sit and wait for their MP, the church, an aid agency, or a foreign, a foreign government to solve the problem." Unquote. She added that they devalue their own capacity and responsibility to act. Whatever its effects, religion remains important to most people in the world, and certainly most people in the developing world. A 2009 Gallup poll asked people in 114 countries how important religion was to them and the median result was 84 percent. With some countries like uh, Bangladesh, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, Malawi, and Burundi reaching 99 percent in the response. Culture and religion still matter. There's nothing deterministic about the development process. Impersonal factors, geography, natural resources, population, climate, insect and diseases are all important, but so too is history, the advantages of a head start, and the persistent 
effects of regional inequalities. Singapore and Mauritius, two islands with very few inherent uh, advantages, have exceeded the hopes that any reasonable person would have had for them back in the 1950s. And although they, although they faced the same constraints of disease and climate, Indonesia reduced the proportion of its population living in poverty from 60% to 20% in the same 20 years, from 1970 to 1990, when Africa was losing half its markets to other countries in the world, including Indonesia. Uh, Christianity's historical influence in the developed world expressed itself through education and the spread of common values rather than through the church's direct intervention in the economic and social spheres. The ideas that Christians even had a, a social mission arose rather late in the 19th century as missionaries were fanning out into tropical countries and running up against inequalities and hardships that begged for solutions. And as modern technology, including medicine, opened up new possibilities for improving the lives of the poor, the pitch of Christian activism became that much more uh, pronounced. Now, what's special about uh, Catholicism? Uh, in contrast to some Protestant confessions that stress individual salvation, Catholic tradition emphasizes the importance of collective well-being. Like the Southern Africa principle of Ubuntu, which is that people are people because of other human beings, the Catholic notion of the dignity of the human person is rooted in relations with others. Unlike Martin Luther, who believed strongly in the separation of the spiritual and secular kingdoms, or the Orthodox, who see the world as irreparably broken. The Catholic Church believes in the possibility of creating some semblance of the Kingdom of God on earth. And this is not to suggest that Protestants are all pessimistic or that they have not been interested in serving others, but the importance of social action and an essential optimism about the world have been at the heart of modern Roman Catholicism.